In a world ravaged by spiritual deception, where much of Christianity has led into grave doctrinal error, many churches and Christian bookstores are not safe places anymore. So what is a spiritual seeker to do? They are to test all things and hold fast what is good. My name is Chris Lawson, and this is Spiritual Research Network. Our goal is to proclaim the gospel, encourage biblical discernment, and expose dangerous mystical practices in the world and in the church. Join me now as we examine the issues of our day in the light of God's written word. Jude goes on and then he talks about the Israeli apostasy, the angelic apostasy, and the pagan apostasy, the characteristics of false teachers, the future judgment of false teachers, the defense of the faith against false teachers, and then he finishes with this beautiful doxology. In the end of Jude, he says, Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling or falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. He's defending the faith. He's teaching the believers how to avoid error. He's warning about deception. And again, He's exalting the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to give this illustration. I'm going to talk about the book Jesus Calling. Sarah Young is the author, and, you know, apparently she's written the book. She wants to help people. I'm not here to pass judgment on her heart. You know, it seems like she has good intentions. She says she's a Christian. She's been a missionary. And for years, she's been writing books. And uh, apparently now she's hearing from Jesus and putting this into words in the text of her book. And uh, that's quite interesting now, because it says over here, uh, we have the more sure word of prophecy. I don't know why we can't just go back and teach what the scripture says, instead of coming up with new literature and, uh, you know, saying it's Jesus talking to her. I'm going to quote from her in a minute here. So, uh, you, you'll find, if you've done some research, uh, there are numerous articles. We have on our website a page called Jesus Calling by Sarah Young, another New Age Jesus, with Jesus in quotes. My friend Warren B. Smith has written extensively on this. Obviously, he's written his refutation of Sarah Young's book called Another Jesus Calling, How False Christs Are Entering the Church Through Contemplative Prayer. I will quote from Sarah Young here, but I want to just say, here's what the refutation is. Uh, Sarah Young was influenced by a book that was channeled. Spiritistic Activity, the book God Calling. God Calling was permeated with New Age terminology. It talks about God's universal spirit, and God is in everyone. Okay, again, this is the book God Calling, not Jesus Calling. Warren B. Smith first talks in his book, his refutation about God Calling, again, in spiritistically channeled literature. This is the book that influenced Sarah Young early on. You know, this book talks about experiences replacing God's word. New Truth and New Revelation, a perverted understanding of Psalm 46, verse 10. New Age Christianity. You know, the book God Calling, a witch god. You know, the god of the angels and the witches, the god of, uh, you know, the cults, the god of who? God Calling. It seems like people will grab onto anything these days and say, oh, it's from God. Really? (laughs) That might not be the case. Test it, examine it. In part two of Warren's book, he gives 20 concerns about the book Jesus Calling. I'm reading from Warren's table of contents here. He says his book is inspired by a channeled New Age book, uh, Channeling Jesus, with a question mark, Testing the Spirits, Jesus Contradicts Himself, with a question mark, Jesus Tells Us to Laugh at the Future, question mark, The Flattery of Jesus, question mark, Who Wants Us to Rest by the Wayside, with a question mark, Visualizing Jesus, with a question mark, The Dark Night of Jesus' Birth, Question mark. Abraham guilty of, quote, idolatry, quote, and, quote, sun worship, end quote, with a question mark. Sun spelled S-O-N, meaning Abraham was worshiping his son. Uh, that's what this so-called Jesus was communicating through Sarah Young to her. Uh, contemplative prayer in the New Age in Psalm 4610. Practicing what presence? Question mark. Co-creating with God, quantum leap, quantum Christ, cocoon of light, the, quote, great work of divine alchemy, Jesus is above all and in all, 
anyway, Warren goes on, and, and, and obviously he is giving a biblical refutation of the book, Jesus Calling, a devotional by Sarah Young. So Warren has also written some other booklets. Changing Jesus Calling, Damage Control for a False Christ. And he's written another one that just came out more recently, The New Age Implications of Jesus Calling. Now, I'm mentioning these, not just, I'm not just trying to push Warren's book here. I'm mentioning these because there are sound biblical refutations that have refuted to the T Sarah Young's book. Now, Warren and I, we've talked about this. We looked at numerous books and we're both aware of what's going on here. Warren came out of the New Age movement years ago. Uh, he's writing from someone who was steeped in New Age and occult teachings and practices. And uh, I was dabbling in the New Age things. Um, I had an experience uh, before I was a Christian where I actually took some hallucinogenic mushrooms and was out in the desert, the Joshua Tree, Jumbo Rocks, California. And I saw Jesus out in the sky. He had big wings. And I was laying there in the sand for an hour or two, completely blown out on mushrooms, hallucinating. And this big Jesus in the sky began to communicate with my buddy and I. And the inspirations that we were getting were, come back and start shrooming again. And when you come back, bring out road flares. You know those ones you can buy at the store, at the car auto store? And set up a big triangle out here in the desert. And when you come back and you set up that triangle with those road flares at night, you can summon the UFOs and you can call upon Jesus. Now that's interesting. That's the message I was getting, and that's the message my buddy was getting. In fact, we even recorded it on a cassette tape. I don't have a cassette tape anymore. I listened to it years ago and threw it in the trash. But it's interesting because we were getting the same alleged revelation from a so-called Jesus that we thought we saw. We were under the influence of hallucinogenic drugs. And this Jesus up in the sky that we saw, I saw him, and as I was explaining it to him, my friend was saying, yeah, that's exactly what I'm seeing. And my buddy was explaining about this Jesus, and I was saying, yeah, I see that too. Well, I honestly think we really did see something, but I think it was a demonic entity masquerading as an angel of light. Just like what Satan does, and Paul says this in the book of Second Corinthians. I'm going to read it. This is important because I had a so-called experience, yet my experience was purely anti-scriptural and demonic. Yet I claimed that I saw Jesus. The Jesus I saw had wings. Now, according to the Bible, I don't see anywhere in Scripture where Jesus has wings. Now, do angels have wings? (laughs) The cherubim have wings, apparently. But Paul says here they can masquerade as angels of light. He says... Paul's referring to false teachers. He's refuting error. Oh, that you would bear with me in a little folly, and indeed you do bear with me, for I am jealous for you with godly jealousy, for I have betrothed you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Okay, Paul's desire is to present them to Christ, that they would be a pure church before the Lord. He says, But I fear, lest somehow as a serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Okay? He's talking about the corruption of the Christian's mind from the simplicity that is in Christ, the biblical Jesus. Okay? He says, For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit, which you have not received, or a different gospel, which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. He's saying, what are you guys doing? You're putting up with these people who are bringing you a counterfeit Jesus, a different spirit, and a different gospel. And then he goes on, he says that these these types of false teachers, he says, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself, transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. 
For further information on this subject, remember that Spiritual Research Network offers a growing selection of books, articles, videos, and audio messages that will help equip you to effectively proclaim the gospel and encourage you to be biblically discerning in these last days. You can visit our website at spiritualresearchnetwork.com. My name is Chris Lawson, and I want to thank you for your interest in and support of our Spiritual Research Network ministry.